a flash MPU. This one, the System 4 version. You can tell by the yellow flipper ROM. And uh, this one doesn't boot. So here's preliminarily what I think I need to do to this board. One, to make it boot would probably be to remove one, two, three scan B sockets. And <clears throat> I'll test these flipper ROMs. I may just replace them, but then combine <clears throat> these three OEM ROMs into a single ROM and install it at IC14. We don't have any AMI chips on the board, so that's good. I will replace this power filter cap and I will replace all of these headers. These are display headers at the top and this is the power header. And of course I will replace the 40 pin male headers. Sorry, I got my toes in there. One of the problems with these system three and four boards is they use this 6875 um, chip in the clock circuit. I haven't figured out how to replace that I also have to see if there's a scan B socket where the processor is. So here we go. And here we are on my bench with this Williams Flash System 4 MPU. And you can see I left the scan B sockets that are no longer required since I burned a 2716, actually a 2732 that I doubled up on and installed it at IC14. I have resocketed those three chips, the 5101, just in case the client wants to install NVRAM. And by the way, that is an AMI 5101. I missed that earlier was while I was going through this. I have installed a socket where the 6800 goes and where the 6875 goes. So what is that? A total of four, five, six sockets. Not too bad. It would be seven and eight would be up there if this were a system three board. I've replaced the headers to the displays, the display blanking and the diagnostic switch, and this is power in, and I've replaced the male 40 pin header. And I think we're good to go. Well, I know we're good to go actually. So let's boot it up. This is gonna boot into audits because there's no batteries in it. So 486 is a game number. I think two is uh, probably the rev number of the software, not sure. So I'm gonna flick power off and then on and it boots into attract mode. Let me get rid of this light. Let me do that one more time so you can see the LEDs. And that's what they do. And so we are in attract mode. Lamp matrix is in attract mode and the only coil that's on except for a periodic flash, because this is after all a flash game, is the coin lockout coil, coil 16. So let's put it into test. I'm going to show you the LEDs for when it goes into test. And back to the displays. Display test. Working. Lamp test. Solenoid test. I will say that these Williams three through seven boards, they're mostly pretty formulaic in that, well, that was interesting. It, uh, for the special solenoids, it went solenoid two, one, three, four, five, six. Let's see that again, just for giggles. I was saying these three through seven CPU and driver boards are pretty formulaic in that if you do certain things to them, uh, they just run and now I say that the next one I run into will probably be a real booger. So I'm going to actuate or I'm going to close the sensing switches for the special solenoids and see that all six of them fire. And there you go. This is my little doodad tester that I use to test special solenoids and also say, um, sound select. So just press those buttons like this. And it causes a special solenoid to fire. And the next test is switch test. So I'll get my Pinitech switch matrix tester in hand and go through column one. 
flash has 48 switches that it will report. If you try switch 49, for instance, it just will not report it. So let me do 48, there we go. And where are we at now? These are the audits. You can set audit uh, and adjustment 18. If you set that to zero, zero, this will put uh, this CPU into free play. That's of course, once you get batteries back in to the CPU. Well, she's good to go. Thank you so much. Uh, assuming your driver board is fine because the client sent just an MPU without driver board. Um, this MPU board is definitely good to go and you shouldn't have any other problems with the game. Thanks so much for sending it.